application under Galbraith Avenue. If the applicant is here, uh, we'd, be, we'd, we'd be happy to hear from you. Just for the record, can you state your name and address? Uh, my name is Dave Zepp. I'm with Joseph M. Estock Engineering. Uh, my address is 28 Caravan Drive, Birdsboro. Uh, our office address is 355 South Henderson Road, King of Prussia. And also, in attendance, I have uh, Mrs. Lisa D. Ferdinando along with me tonight. Now, she's the, she's the owner. She's the executrix for her mother's estate, who is the owner of the property at 800 Galbra. So uh, she may be able to offer up any other information, whatever, if you have any questions in, in that regard. But quite simply, uh, what 800 Galbraith Avenue is, it's a minor subdivision of a piece of property that uh, originally when Lisa's mom, bought, mother, mother and father bought the property back in the late 50s, there were two lots. Uh, Delaware County had recognized the parcel ID numbers. There was a lot that fronted on Galbraith Avenue, which is where his father built the house, and they had a lot in the back, which has frontage on Rankin, Randall, and Tyson uh, that was purchased at the time. So back in the 50s, when the property was purchased, there were two actual lots there that were, you know, the two parcels that they bought together. In 2004, or somewhere in that range, 2006, June Wilson decided that she wanted to go through a reverse subdivision and combine both properties into one lot because at the time, whatever they had plans that they were, you know, they wanted to expand the house that sits on 800 Galbraith. Uh, her son, Jay, Lisa's brother, whatever, he was going to move in there, whether they were going to put an addition on and they needed the land or whatever, you know, to be able to like meet some of the requirements. So she went through and did a reverse subdivision in the early 2000s. Where we're at now with the passing of Lisa's mom, whatever, what we're looking to do as far as the estate's concerned, we're looking to sell the property. But what we're proposing is just another, but no, it's a simple two lot subdivision. What we would like to do is recreate that property line that was there originally so we could sell the property that has frontage on Galbraith with the house as one parcel. And then we would still maintain the land in the back or have that and not lose the value of that because that would be another property that we would then market and look to sell. What we're trying to do at this point or whatever is just subdivide the property back the way it was before June did the reverse subdivision in 2006. So we actually have two marketable properties and not lose the value of the land in the back there. So in a nutshell, that's what we're proposing at this time. There are no proposed improvements. We don't have any plans to do anything in the back with the lot that we're asking to create other than to just put it on the market and see what type of value it can get for us in addition to be able to selling the house at this time. So if I may, it's like, I didn't misspeak or anything, did I? It's like, <laughs> so we're just trying to like put the property back in the condition it was before 2004 or six, whenever, you know, June did the reverse subdivision. So we have two marketable properties there, so. No proposed improvements, just looking to sell the house and then market the lot in the back. So, any any questions for? There, there is a proposed easement on the plan, but in conversations or whatever, we've gone through before the planning commission and they strongly recommended that we remove that. And where we're at right now is like it's still on the plan. We have not revised the plan, but that's something that the family is more than willing to do, remove that easement. So, so before, before Correct. I, I spoke to Mr. Zepp yesterday. We, um, we discussed the easement. Uh, right now, the zoning officer had determined with the easement they were proposing a flag lot. It did not meet the requirements of the flag lot, so therefore it was out of compliance with zoning. And Mr. Zepp said they would take it off. I told them not to do it tonight for the tonight's meeting. I have it in the resolution that that easement will be removed as part of the, the conditional approval. And you read through the resolution and you're okay with everything? Yes and yes. 
Very appropriate. Well, is this second lot now? Will it'll be big enough to build another house on? Oh, certainly, sure. Okay. The uh, the actual lot that has frontage on Galbraith, or whatever, is eleven thousand five hundred square feet. The property in the back is over twenty six thousand square feet. So it would, yeah, yes, to answer the question. Um, later on tonight, it's on our agenda to make a motion um, for either approve it or disapprove it, and we'll uh, do that later on. Okay. All right. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. At this time, I'd like to move on to citizen comments. Um, we are bro we are broadcasting live again. Uh, the dial number in is five seven one seven eight. Again, if any residents would like to call in, the call in number is 571 478 4021. And the code you'll be entering 795 569 319 pound. Again, the code is 795 569 319 pound. Have to press star six to unmute your phone. Um, the telephone number? Yeah. Telephone number again is 571 748 4021. I will give it a brief, we'll give, we'll give it a little bit of a moment, and um, if nobody calls in, we'll move on to our citizen comments within the audience. All right, let the record show there were no citizens' comment via telephone. At this time, I will move on to citizens' comments within our room. Um, anybody from the right side of the room like, like to come up and speak? You might speak if you can stay with your seat. I'll bring the microphone to you, and then after you're done, I'll grab it from you. Thank you. Thank you. Even though we may know who you are, can you please state your name and address for the record? Uh, Craig Small, 4306 Trophy Drive. Uh, myself and the other two fire chiefs are here uh, from the Township Fire Companies. And we just figured we'd check in with you after our first week, um, see if you guys had any questions, any concerns at all like that, uh, tell you what our next steps are going to be. Um, so currently, the first week has been great. Um, we average probably 15.7, about 16 guys a call, no matter what time of day it is. Um, our drills were averaging about 25 to 30 people. Uh, during the big storm on Friday night, we had four trucks uh, in station running all around town. Um, pretty much it. Uh, we're almost done with the bylaws. We're probably 75%. So we'll be handing them to the presidents uh, not next week because they can't meet with us to find out. We'll get that done. We have a meeting coming up with our merger consultant. Um, so we're going to meet with him again and talk more about the future plan for, you know, fire and EMS service. And that's basically, I just, we figured we'd come and tell you guys all what's going on. So you get it from firsthand. And uh, if you have any questions, we're here for you. Thank you, Craig. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I've heard positive things. I'm, I'm, I think the township is excited that um, the merger is finally taking place. And so are we. It sounds like that it's mm -hmm. working. Mm -hmm. I'm hearing that the, the that the younger generation is very excited about it. Also, yes. so we ran 46 calls in a week, so they're happy. Yeah, my I guess my I would just uh, 
reiterate our encouragement to you guys to. Uh, so with that said, if there's any comments from the board. You're welcome. You, know, you had a rough first week for trial. That's for sure. We hit the ground running. Yeah. Um, I'll just add that it's been about eight, almost nine years we started this. Um, discussion when I first got on the board, so sure. I am I'm happy that everyone is working together, that this is the future of um, yes. you know, fire companies across across the state. Yes, ma'am. But I'm glad that we're we're um, we're moving in the right direction. So great job, kudos to everyone. Thank you. The, the Upper Chichester Fire Company Station Ten. Yes. Correct. Mm -hmm. So we're still three single entities. We just we're working together, working out of one firehouse and. Doing a lot of work in the backgrounds. Well, I don't know how my report on the new smart report. Okay. But it, it's part of it is kudos. I, I know what's been going on, so I'll put that on the new report. We're going to try to have a representative every meeting. So if there's anything, we'll have a better line of shift. Um, just one of the initiatives we're working on going forward. Craig, I, I also heard there's some uh, costs that are going to be associated with the consolidation. Um, some fifteen to sixteen thousand dollars in talking to one of the members, and I assured him that the board would look. Um, he just called the other day, so I didn't tell anybody. But uh, I assured him we'd look into helping with that cost. That's awesome. We appreciate that. We uh, when we meet with him, we'll get a better number. Right. But that was the first thing he threw out with us. We just have to make sure there's nothing unforeseen, and he covers all his fees and stuff like that right. between him and his lawyer. Craig, I, I think that would help. The board is if he would officially submit something of what the cost is and mm -hmm. what the cost, um, what what is associated with the cost. Uh, no problem. Also, okay. Okay. Yes, we will. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Anybody else from the right side? If not, Mr. Sammons. Hi. What thank you. Even though we know you, uh, Wendell, can you state your name and address, please? Yes. Uh, good evening. My name is Wendell Sammons, 211 Emily Lane, in Boothwen, Pennsylvania. I've been a resident of Upper Chichester for 33 years. And I'm here um, to present to the commissioners a, a resolution. May I, may, I hand, may I hand you a resolution? Yes, you can hand Thank them you. Up. And this resolution really speaks for itself. And uh, after I read it, um, if there's any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer. Okay, resolution. Whereas, Upper Chichester Township recognizes, recognizes the diversity of our community, including the historically African-American communities of Excelsior Village, Twin Oaks Farms, and Twin Oaks Village. Whereas the township acknowledged that incidents such as the murders of George Floyd, Renee Taylor, Eric Gardner, Trayvon Martin, Sandra Bland, Ahmaud Arbery, and so many more, serve as examples that disregard for black people lives has caused the loss of numerous lives for no reason other than the racist biases. Whereas the Township Board of Commissioners and Township staff strive to be welcoming a place where all people feel protected, included, secure, and safe, we will continue to deliver all services equally, equitably, and continue to strive to be responsible government that believes everyone deserves equal economics, political and social rights and opportunities. Whereas now is the time of action where the Board of Commissioners need to reaffirm actions taken to address issues all members of our community face. Now, therefore, the Upper Chichester Township Board of Commissioners orders resolves as follows. One, to continue the community planning efforts that take into actions account the deeds of all residents of Upper Chichester Township promoting equality and justice. Two, to ensure a zero tolerance for bigotry, racism, sexism, and other forms of hate. Three, to use
anti-racist and racial equity lenses to assess current and future policies and programs to keep for to keep the conversation brought forth by the Black Lives Matter movement in our community going and address the concerns of all residents. And this, I'm hoping that will be adopted um, today or soon. And we're asking the Board of Commissioners to approve this resolution. If there's any questions, I'll answer them. Well, no, I, I, I'd like to thank you for coming in tonight. Um, I don't think, uh, I don't think the board was made aware of that this was going to be presented tonight. So, okay. you know, we, we definitely would love to um, breathe, breathe, breathe through it and um, take it on, on, under consideration. And um, we'll see if we can um, get, uh, get this through. Okay. But Thank I'll, you very much. But tonight, we, there's, there'll, there'll, there'll be no action tonight on it. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I'll just add, thank you um, for bringing this in. Um, as stated in the resolution, Upper Chichester has been a community um, where we have uh, great police officers. We haven't had issues um, in the past with our police officers or any um, professionals that are here that work for the township. So we have a great track record and we want to keep that. I don't see an issue with the resolution, so I'll definitely be voting in favor of it. I would recommend you all come back next month. Okay. Um, anybody else would like to come up and speak from the left side of the room? Anybody at all? Let the record show there are no more citizens' comments, and we'll move on to our regular meeting. <coughs> A vote was taken on August 6, 2020, Board of Commissioners meeting authorizing the advisement of a public hearing and ordinance amend amending the Upper Chichester Township Office official zoning map to rezone the parcel known as 09-00-0188-00. The other parcel is 09-00-0018. 89-00. The third parcel is 09-00-0187-00. The fourth parcel is 09-00-0188-02. And the last parcel number is 09-00-0188-03. From the R2 medium density residential district to the C2 highway commercial district. And also, we met in executive session tonight to discuss various litigation and personnel matters. Don't have any more announcements at this time. Um, can I have approval of the minutes from the July 9th, 2020 Board of Commissioners meeting? So moved. Second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The ayes have it. The motion is carried. I'd like to move on to our resolutions and um, motions for consideration for approval tonight. Um, I have a member of the board to consider a resolution authorizing the township solicitor to intervene and represent the Upper Chichester Township Board of Commissioners at the Upper Chichester Zoning Hearing Board in, in September for the petition of the Bethel Road Real Estate for a variance from zoning ordinance number 678 adopted December 12th, 2020. This is 2012. Second. Uh, I'd just like to make a comment. Um, this is actually a billboard. Um, it's seeking some variance. So we're um, asking our solicitor to go there and petition any concerns that our board might have with it. That should be December 13th, 2012. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The ayes have it and motion is carried. Can I have a member of the board consider approving the minor sub subdivision application for the Wilson property submitted by submitted by the state of June Marie Wilson located at 800 Garbeth Avenue? So moved. Motion in the second. Are there any comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. 
Any opposed? The ayes have it and motion is carried. That, that motion was a resolution and that resolution number is 2020-37. Have a member of the board consider a motion authorizing the township solicitor to prepare and advertise an ordinance amending ordinance number 678 adopted December 13, 2012, the Upper Chichester Township Code of Ordinance Chapter 600 zoning to allow for bureau for, for bure, brewery, excuse me, and brew pub and craft brewery and tap room and micro brewery in certain zoning districts. So moved. Question. Yeah. This is this is just the preliminary thing. It's going okay. to be sent to the County Planning Board, as well as our local planning board for comments. Any additional comments would be held before a public hearing. We can incorporate those. If you have additional comments, yeah. please let me know and I'll try and accumulate those. Okay. I would just ask Got the it. board to read through the proposed ordinance, um, read through the definition of what I'm a brewery is, a brew, a, a, a brew pub, and so forth, and identify where the proposed use for these um, breweries would be versus your zoning versus the zoning district. So we have IC, C1 um, areas. So please read through those and see which ones are allowed in, in, uh, in uh, which district. Okay. So there's a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The ayes have it. Motion is carried. Have a member of the board to consider a motion authorizing the advertisement of requests for proposals for the Boothwin Town Center plan. So moved. A motion in the second. Are there any comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The ayes have it, and the motion is carried. The next two the next two motions and the, the next motion of declaration will be read by Commissioner Edward Castle. Thank you. I need to put this mask down. Uh, declaration of disaster uh, emergency. Whereas on or about August 4th, 2020, tropical storm East Isaiah in a subsequent weather event on August 7th, 2020 has caused or threatened to cause injury, damage, and suffering to the persons and properties of Upper Chichester Township. And whereas the tropical storm East Isaiah in this subsequent Subsequent weather event on August 7, 2020 has endangered the health, safety, and welfare of a substantial number of persons residing in Upper Chichester Township and threatens to create problems greater in scope that the township may be able to resolve. And whereas emergency management measures are required to reduce the severity of this disaster and to prevent the health and safety and welfare affected residents in, in the township. Now, therefore, we are the undersigned Board of Commissioners of Upper Chichester Township pursuant to provisions of Section 7501 of the Pennsylvania Emergency Management Services Code 35PAC.S, Section 7501, as amended, though hereby declare the existence of a disaster, existence of a disaster emergency in Upper Chichester Township. Further, we direct the Township Emergency Management Coordinator the activities of the emergency response to take all appropriate action needed to evaluate the efforts of the disaster to aid in restoration of essential public services and to take any other emergency response action deemed necessary to respond to this emergency. Still further, we authorize the Township officials to act as necessary to meet their current Exigency, well, I don't know what the heck that is, exigencies of this emergency, namely by the employment of temporary workers, by the rental of equipment, by the purchase of supplies and materials, and by entering into such contracts and agreements for performance of public works as may be required to meet the emergency, all without regard to those time consumer procedures and formalities normally prescribed by law mandatory con constitutional requirements accepted. This declaration shall take effect immediately.
Michael Gaudioso, President of the Board of Commissioners, Joe Biacco, Vice President of the Board of Commissioners, William T. Robinson, Emergency Management Coordinator, and assisted by, tested by George Needles, Township Manager. This motion a second. Are there any comments? Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The ayes have it. Motion is carried. Okay. All right. Uh, the next, uh, the next motions will be Ritter, would be read by Commissioner Nicole Whitaker. Good evening, everyone. Thank you. The board consider a motion granting a field use fee reduction fee for the SJ Warriors travel baseball team, as well as the Delco Dragons travel baseball team. I believe the fee we discussed was $100, correct? So the fee will be reduced to $100 per team. All right, there's a motion and a second. Any other comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The ayes have it. Motion is carried. Consider a motion granting a Fury Road Fieldhouse daily rental fee reduction to $275 daily for the Delco Goats basketball camp held from August 10th through August 13th. Motion and a second. Any comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The ayes have it. Motion is carried. Consider a motion accepting the resignation of Christopher Craig from the Upper Chichester Township Recreation Board. Motion and a second. Any comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Motion is carried. Motion was Robinson of Nine Oxford Place to the Upper Chichester Township Recreation Board. Motion and a second. Are there any comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The ayes have it. Motion is carried. Consider a motion authorizing the township solicitor to prepare and advertise an ordinance amending Ordinance number 678, adopted December 13th, 2012, the Upper Chichester Township Code of Ordinances, Chapter 505, Subdivision and Land Development, changing the language in relation to the fee in lieu to align with Act 135 of September 24th, 2014. And in a second, are there any comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The ayes have it. Motion is carried. Which one? Uh, did we do, uh, was it 15 and 14? The traveling teams? Yeah, did, yeah we, we did those. those. Oh. We did them together. We, I read them together. Oh, okay. Uh, the next motions will be read by uh, Commissioner Joe Neary. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, consider a motion authorizing the township manager to prepare and advertise the job announcement for position of finance director. Second. Motion and Question. second. Questions? Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I don't understand this. I got to take this off just to hear, for people to hear me. A couple months ago, we, we all got an email. I got it two days prior to a meeting. Uh, I had to correct that one regarding COVID-19 and concerns of our budget. And we were actually look at our departments, try to get some money, move around, whatever, because of the concern. Nobody knows what's going to happen. We don't know yet. We have a meeting next week on the budget. My concern is two months ago we did that. I did a reduction in some of mine. I, I could not reduce anything out of, and I'll put it on record, I did not reduce anything out of the fire or the EMS because it, that was too, it was it's limited now as it is, but I was able to come up with a reduction of 24000 in my budget. I don't understand. Even though we budgeted for this year, nobody budgeted COVID. 
And I know I'm looking at my wallet at home. Everybody else is looking at the wallet at home. And I think personally, I would like to table this and, and I would move to table it until we actually find out what's going on. The board is knocking at our door uh, with the EIT. There's a lot of rumor out there until so it's fact. We don't know. If you have a budget of $105,000, and to me, that should have been part of our reduction two months ago in the, re in the uh, thing. So after this vote, I would request something from the manager for that, but I move because I don't think right now for us to have a CFO or financial director at 105000 whether we budget it this year or not, or we budget it next year, because we don't even know where the budget is. And I'm sorry, I don't think we have two part-time people at $71,000 now. If we're tightening up our belt, we have to tighten up our belt. I know last we're doing it to Last week when we were discussing this, did we agree to entertain it but not make a decision, not make a move? Well, am I correct? Well, right now we're just entertaining the idea of putting a um, a advertisement out there to see what type of uh, feedback we get or uh, quality of uh, applicants. So, I mean, we can definitely make a motion to pass it tonight, and if the board feels like later on down the road this is something that financially we cannot incur, we can always pull it later. But I think it's important, you know, just to get the just to get the quality applicants' uh, resumes in during 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 this time period. I don't believe the salary is one hundred five thousand. That's what was budgeted. It's up there. What's so, up? As, as Mike indicated, I think this gives us an I will give us an idea of what kind of costs it will incur. And I'd also like to point out that it, I believe that at least one of those um, part time people will be leaving in the next year, 15 months, correct? Um, and you need to have some type of transition between the two. And we can make a determination that if our revenues are down this year that we can't begin to hire this position until the middle of next year or towards the end, but we do, do need to have a transition plan in place. That part of the reduction that we went from department head to department head to see if we could save some money for COVID? Yeah, so initially uh, when the budget was submitted and approved, there was an approval for a finance director that included a salary of uh, pro prorated because it was the anticipated uh, start date would have been by first. Uh, so it would be $90,000 prorated, which is about the going rate for a CPA qualified uh, finance director in, in municipal government. Uh, we also budgeted for $35,000, which is a cost for family benefits to the township at this point. Um, then when we did our cost reduction, what was submitted to the board at that point was, was that the uh, not to hire the person or not to hire the position until November. So that the benefit cost for the year and the uh, salary cost for the year was deleted out, was part of the cost savings, as well as any uh, some of the onboarding costs that we figured, you know, this this may not happen this year. We can reduce some of the onboarding costs that we would have with uh, bringing a person in new as well. Um, I think it's dangerous to to advertise for a position that we're not going to hire for. So you have people that send their resumes in anticipating an interview, and then we say, hey, we're going to put the position on hold. So I will will state that this is a professional position. You're looking to hire someone who, who has, uh, we're asking for, you know, we're as a potential for, to have a CPA. So these people are professionals. Um, Candidly, if they're listening to this meeting tonight, we probably will not get them to apply. <laughs> um, but it is a position that is that is is very common for this size and smaller size municipalities as a way to manage the finance. Um, now, I do have a finance background, so I've been able to piecemeal a lot of this together. And we've been very fortunate this year uh, and last year that we were able to find two retired. One was a formal, former CEO of a company and a former CPA. And the other one was a former CFO of a company who came to work for us on a part-time basis and are, are very, very productive. We cannot guarantee that we're going to find people with that work ethic and that knowledge uh, in, at a, in a part-time position on a repeated basis. We really lucked out. So I, I think we got to have a kind of a plan forward. 
Uh, I am going to propose the position in the budget again next year. I've been looking around again for where, where could we cost save to make this fit in. And I do believe it will fit in with the budget with a, a, a no tax increase budget, which is my, my obligated uh, to deliver that I'm obligated to deliver to you on the annual basis. And I will be doing that again this year. So. Has there any been any more discussion about the school district taking half of the 1%? Uh, there has never been anything formally submitted to the township in reference to our earned income tax. Mm -hmm. Also, though, uh, in our budget, just keep in mind the earned income tax is uh, pays for police services. Uh, all 100% proceeds of our earned income tax goes into the police fund and pays for the police services in the township. So when when you need rescuing or there's a call or something, that police officer is being paid by that earned income tax that's paid. And so, it's thank you, thank you for explaining it. It's my understanding from past school board members. Now, they may go to referendum on the issue, but mm -hmm. I believe that's the way they need to do it. That's and I think the township too. would oppose that that's referendum. Um, but I, I don't believe they have any other recourse other than to go to a referendum and ask people if they want, you know, half of the 1% to go to the, to the school board. So, Got two it. different subjects. The first subject matter was whether or not we're going to move on advertising financial director. So there's been a motion to table it. So there would be, you, you, okay, thank you. I'll second. Yeah. Okay. So motion and a second to table it. Mr. Needle, should you take a roll call, please? Sure. Sure thing. Commissioner Baca. Yep. Commissioner uh, Whitaker? Yes. Commissioner Godioso? No. Commissioner Brikowski? Yes. Commissioner Neary? No. Uh, the motion passes 3 2. Okay. Citizens' comments have to be held, ma'am, until the end of the meeting. Actually, we actually had them already. Um, consider a motion accepting the 2021 minimum municipal obligation for the police pension plan in the amount of $999,571. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The ayes have it. Motion is carried. Can you skip 21? Excuse me? 21. Skip 21. Oh, the oh. finance committee meeting. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. To consider a motion authorizing the township manager to advertise the finance committee meeting for 4 p.m. on Thursday, August 20th. Second. Um, question? Yes. Why is it at 4 p.m.? So we can use the two financial people inside to do it, and historically we've had no one show up. <laughs> so, this... who, who, so who's going to be there? Mike, Mike, Marco, yourself. So you'll be the only commissioner there? At, at this point, well, also, I, anybody, any, any of you are average. You, you're requesting that you can. Yeah, the idea of doing it earlier was that we would, we would, we would advertise it, we would post it, we would do it digitally so people could call in. I don't think there's any preference of doing it at night or or uh, or during the day. The the six month review, which is what this meeting is, looking back at the end of uh, June, historically over the past five years, we've never had any public attend. Right, right. I understand that. So there, it will be. I'll be able to call in or view in at the absolutely. Point. Okay. All right. That's fine. Motion and a second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Ayes have it. Motion is carried. Consider a motion accepting the 2021 minimum municipal obligation for the non-uniform defined benefit pension plan in the amount of 159,723 dollars. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Consider a motion accepting the 2021 minimum municipal obligation for the non-uniform defined contribution pension plan in the amount of forty eight thousand dollars. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? The ayes have it. The motion is carried. Consider a motion approving the trash refund list 2020-8 in the amount of five hundred and seventy eight dollars and twenty cents. Second. Motion in a second. Any comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any, any opposed? The ayes have it. Motion is carried. Consider a motion accepting the retirement. Re 
consider a motion approving the list of bills in the amount of five hundred twenty-one thousand ninety-one dollars and ninety-eight cents. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Guys, have the motion is carried. Sorry about this one, unfortunately, but consider a motion accepting the retirement requests of Patrolman First Class Hurley Smoke, effective October 9th, 2020. Any comments? I just one comment. I if we don't accept it, do you have to stay? <laughs> Un unfortunately, he's unable to stay. Uh, Patrolman Hurley's been here for a very long time. He's, uh, I've known him. I have no personal number. He's somebody that I've seen throughout the township, and I will miss him. Motion hey. in the second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The ayes have it. Motion is carried. Consider a motion activating the Civil Service Commission for the purpose of administrating, administering an examination for police officer. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The ayes have it. Motion is carried. Um, on number 29, I would like to change that resolution. That's a motion, sir. I, uh, my motion, rather than what is written there, would be that the, uh, the township manager or solicitor send a registered letter to Twin Oaks Towing explaining their deficiencies and that they have 30 days to provide missing documents or their contract will be terminated. We have given them... Is there a second? Second. Okay. We have given them more than 30 days our first one was 30 days and then we're we we what well, we had the covid right so now we're in august we have given them ample time to comply they have not complied why are we giving them another 30 days we've already done an rfp we have three companies that have bid on the towing mm -hmm. why are we giving them another 30 days I was. I think we need to give them one more thirty well, day only because I, I think they're under the impression that they, they didn't have to put an RFP. But they are also under the impression they had okay. submitted everything. Right. Uh, th that they had submitted everything according to George's December letter, correct? And I asked him to send an email earlier earlier this week, and he has not had a reply. Um, so, and I said, then we need to do it formally where he has a, a record of a receipt of the request. So do they have their salvage license? So we're still, we have not received all the documentation from them. One of them would be a notarized copy of a valid salvage license. Okay. This, this is not the stop the RFP process. Oh no, I, I, under, I understand that. The, my issue is that we have given them ample time to come up with all the documents and they still have not. And he knows he he received the 30 days. So what's the status of his location, the building? My understanding is that, that what was there an inspection? So there was two inspections and he's been given a conditional CO with the requ with requirements of that CO. And what are the requirements? Uh, well, one of the requirements was a valid salvage license uh, to, to be able to satisfy the zoning requirement there. Um, I believe a couple were uh, fire extinguishers needed to be upgraded. Um, typical things that we th see through a C uh, CO application. So at this time, he does not have a, he has a, only a temporary CO to operate. And at this point, the, we still have not received the documentation that was requested initially for the, uh, for that, for, to be in compliance with our contract. Okay, so he essentially abandoned the township We've given him ample enough time, and now you're saying we're giving him another 30 days to get all his documentation together. And if we give him 30 more days, he gets everything together. So then he continues to be the township towing towing um, contract agreement. He's going to continue working on behalf of the township no, with the would, reputation that he has. We would have to go, go ahead, Joe. This this particular motion does not obviate the. the the desire of the board to change towers. If, you, if the board wants to change towers, they can do that at any time because they serve at the, they serve at the pleasure of the board. If, if we want to vote on this, there's a motion and a second, unless someone removes the second, then we can vote on this. If Joe Smith decides that he wants to motion to change the tower, then 
that person has every right to do that. Mr. Fears, does the contract for us to get out of the contract work in now, technically, I guess, because we've had a contract for with that, does that state 30 days to either size, 60 days? I believe that it states 30 days notice. So this could be officially the 30 day notice, technically? Yes, no. Which is just, that, that's not what the motion is. Which is what the original motion is. So if if no one is interested in, in my motion or we could have a vote on it and then go from there. If if my motion does not pass, then someone would certainly be at liberty to uh, motion make the other motion. Who gave the second? Ed did. You want to remove the second? Or you could second? remove the second. Yeah, if I remove the second it it makes his, and then somebody's got to do the one for the 30 days for the other. No, no, 30 days for what? What do you? Terminate the contract. So if he removes the second, then my motion dies on the floor, there's unless there's a different second. Got it. Well, all right, let's go, Ed. Well, I would like to see the 30 days, but at the same time, if, if we don't read, receive it, he's terminated. Can we do that? That was Joe's motion. That was my motion. My motion has not listed. Right. My motion is the township manager or solicitor shall make a motion to terminate. We'll send a registered letter to Twin Oaks Towing explaining their deficiencies and that they have 30 days to provide the missing documents or the contract will be terminated. Right. So your motion, his motion is giving them, we don't have to give them anything. We don't have to give them anything. Right. So he's saying, so his motion is saying you we're giving him 30 days to get everything together. And then if he has everything together in 30 days, then he's going to continue as our towing company. Right. OK, so that's what the motion is. Now, what I'm saying is I don't want him to be the regardless if he gets it in 30 days or not. I want to vote tonight to act to terminate his contract, period. This motion gives him a 30 day notice that we're going to terminate him. Right. The one that's on the paper is the one. It also says that if he does not give us that information in 30 days, that we could that we will be terminating the contract for the solicitor's advice. At this point, there's no motion on the floor. Okay. 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 Thank you. 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 Oh, okay. Let me go. I'll go over this again. It gives him 30 days to give us the information. If at 30, if in 30 days he does not give us the information, then his contract will be terminated according to the terms of this um, motion. If in 30 days he gives us all that, that doesn't mean that the board cannot turn around and say, you know, we want to hire. Yeah, we want to hire um, Joe Neary Towing, which you don't want to do. Sure but then, but then after that, you're still we still have to give him another thirty days, right? No, right. We got to no. give him another thirty days you're to terminate the contract. No, if he the the yes, yeah, I'm sorry. Yes, correct. Sure thing, Mr. Baca. Yes. Commissioner Whitaker? No. Commissioner Godioso? No. Commissioner Rakowski? Yes. Commissioner Neary? Yes. Motion passes. Okay. That's it, Mr. Uh, uh, that's, that was the last one, correct? Okay. I'm going to do that on the 
So we'll move on to our commissioners and professional report. We'll start out with Lisa Capania, our township engineer. Thank you, Mr. President. You do have a copy of my report versus going through all of that. Just give you an update to, to that report. Uh, Kate Glenn, AJ Jerk has been out and has most of the grading of the vacant lots completed. Um, unfortunately, we're in this spell of rain. I don't know that they'll be working tomorrow, so I'm expecting that by the end of next week, we will have those lots cleared, seeded, and, and mulched. So they'll be, they'll be uh, restored. The Charchester Streetscape Project, we have a pre-construction meeting tentatively scheduled for August the 20th. We're waiting for Premier to, to determine whether or not they can make it. That will be at the Office of Housing. That will actually be a virtual meeting with the, mm. the uh, Housing and Community Development Group. Uh, the Bergdahl Basin, the grass will be cut tomorrow. Uh, we have spoken for the last three weeks to the contractor and we did get word this afternoon that they had scheduled the a landscaping company to cut the, cut the weeds. I can't call it grass. Unfortunately, the grass is almost dead. Um, Wawa, we did receive revised uh, plans on Tuesday afternoon. Alex is in process of reviewing those. We should have the review tomorrow. We are anticipating that the record plans can be uh, signed next week, and they're asking for a pre-construction meeting next week. I don't know whether that will happen or not. If we have the record plans back or, or notification from the county that they are in process to be recorded, we will hold that. Um, Costa, we did hear from the HOA, did not hear from Mr. Costa, that he is going out to do one repair uh, over on Village Way due to some uh, basement leaks. However, I've not heard from him concerning the rest of the punch list. Uh, as I reported last, last week, uh, he had spoken to me, wanted his monies released. I told him that he needed to complete the punch list and we have not had that success as of this point. Um, the road program, we're waiting for the contract back from, from AF Damon. Unfortunately, they were a victim of the flooding in Upland. Uh, they are back in service. However, we have not gotten those contracts back. Uh, Sherry is, is trying to uh, get herself back together. We may be sending her uh, another set of, of contracts just due to the circumstance. That's all I have, unless anyone has any questions. Any questions for township engineer? Now we'll move on to our township solicitor. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, you have my report on file. There are not any dramatic changes from last week. There is one additional action item, which would be the approval of the extension uh, letter for the McDermott uh, change request that we voted to advertise on earlier until after September the 18th, 2020. That letter has been signed by the applicant, and uh, you just need a motion to approve that. Uh, any comments? I guess the one question I think that was discussed amongst the board a while um, is if this gets approved, will it will it, will it create a, a, a pre-existing non-conforming use? Well, so it, that's one. Um, right, well, it's something we'll have to consider, and we can certainly discuss that when we have the public hearing, okay. which has been all we've done is advertised for the public hearing. Uh, nothing has been approved or passed yet. Okay. okay. So if you're making a zoning change. It, it, may, it may be a question that we have to take a look at, okay. but we'll, we'll take a look at that, sir. That's nice. mm -hmm. The motion and a second, all in favor? Uh, Aye. All, uh, any opposed? The ayes have it, motion is carried. Everything else is in order, Mr. President. Thank you. Um, Commissioner, our Vice Chairman, Commissioner Joe Blacco. Um, all, all the reports are on file. Uh, just a couple of comments on the highway and sanitation guys. Kudos for what they went through last week. Um, all the trash got picked up. They were, you know, late every night barricading the floods. Same goes to the uh, EMTs, the firemen, 
police. Good job, I sweet by all that. Um, our sewer authority also got flooded out, if anybody was aware of it. They took a pretty good hit down there, too. Um, i just like to ask the board for uh, permission. I met with uh, some residents over by uh, Orchard Lane. It's off a of cherry tree. The entrance coming in is kind of dark. They want a street light put up. We have an existing pole, so there's no cost there. And I think we even have a light laying around we could put there. I mean, the only thing it would cost us is to pay to install it. Several, a couple of hours. Great yeah. yeah, but I think we agreed to do that next week. We talked about it last week, yep. but I need the approval. Nice right, so motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The ayes have it. Motion is carried. That's all I have, unless there's any questions. Any questions for Vice Chairman? Commissioner Bacco? That will move on to uh, Commissioner Nicole Whitaker. Thank you. The Heart and Soul Leadership Team has entered, uh, or should, I should say, will be entering into the final stages, um, uh, phase 3.3 training on Monday, August the 24th. And that meeting is will be from 5 to 6.30 p.m. There's a schedule of all of the, I should say, there's a timeline and schedule of what's happening through the end of this year and into 2021. Um, so please make sure that you um, read through and join any of the um, chats that you that you think that you could add some some input into. The recreation uh, department report for July: the field house had 11 rentals, total income $7,860. Uh, the community service building had five rentals and received $1,450. Programs for J July, they started the outdoor movies. Outdoor movie on July 8th was at Johnson, Johnson Avenue Park. Uh, July 23rd, Kingsman was canceled um, due to weather. Last night's um, movie um, in Twin Oaks was canceled due to weather as well. So those will be rescheduled. Um, they had the um, the second annual water uh, balloon frenzy on July 29th, which uh, was great. No issues there. Um, all of our parks have the um, signage now, uh, making um, children, parents aware of the um, COVID-19 um, COVID social distancing um, and those, re those requirements um, for being in the park. Those are posted throughout all of the parks in the township. The, um, the rec building is open Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. We do have volunteers that are, um, that are monitoring the, the facility as well. Um, one of the grants that we're working on is a DCNR Master Parks Plant, Master Parks Planning Grant along with the Delaware County Planning Grant. And as you heard, you all voted tonight and thank you for your, um, for your support. We have a a new board, my great aunt, she, she happened to ask me, I need something to do. And the current person that was on the board while, while he's great, he just did not have the time because he coaches in the evening. So he didn't have the time to do it. So it just worked out. So she'll be a great asset um, to the, to the rec board. So that's the end of my report. Thank you. Any questions for Commissioner Whitaker? Not we we'll move on to Commissioner, uh, Edward Thank you. Um, we did forget one uh, motion on the, the agenda tonight. I was going to read it underneath our report. I saw that afterwards. Uh, I move to authorize the township manager to send a letter on behalf of the Board of Commissioners to the Upper Chichester Fire Department, Station 10, uh, with information with the Center of Disease Control and Pennsylvania Department of Health of COVID-19 prevention measures. Yeah, I don't have to let it do it. Yeah, that's fine. I didn't, I didn't see on behalf of the Upper Chichester Township Board of Commissioners, I'd like to congratulate you on all your hard work in bringing together the volunteer firefighters throughout the township to run calls under one roof at Station 10. It has been observed that with your efforts that upwards of 30 or more firefighters have been participating in activities at the station, 
With this increased activity and the situation surrounding the COVID-19 pandemic, the Board of Commissioners would like to remind you that the Pennsylvania Department of Health and the CDC are recommending face covering as an effective way to slow the virus. Thank you, uh, George Needles, Township Manager, just as a reminder. So, um, is there a motion, but there's a motion and a second. second. Any comments? There's, I, you know, I just want to reassure the public that our fire department is, you know, they're they're following these guidelines. They are smart group of men and women. Um, you know, this is just a friendly reminder. It's it's not a uh, not a uh, township uh, ordinance. But anyway, with that said, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All, any opposed? The ayes have it. Motion is carried. Also, the reports are on file from the emergency management, and we have a report uh, from the fire marshal this month. Uh, as I stated last week, uh, kudos. Uh, I know Mike said it, a couple other commissioners here on, first of all, the article that was in the Daily Times uh, regarding the operational merger with the fire department's the next step. Also, uh, last week, I stated regarding uh, the DCED study, I'd like to try to get the date set for September 24th uh, for the Board of Commissioners and the committee to discuss the DCED study that we received for the township. Um, the third week of the month is kind of tough for the fire departments because that's where they all have their meetings. I need to put an email out. I need to get hold of the new director from the DCED to see if that's okay with them. Uh, just to put it on record, I stated this last month, I'll say it this month again. There's no delay on the Board of Commissioners behalf of this DCED study. Came to us, COVID came to us, three months later we finally got to meet. Um, when, we, when I reached out to DCED after I met with the committee, I was informed that they have a new director. This new director knows nothing of the Chichester Fire Department. Uh, she's new, she has the report. We have to give her a chance to read this. My concern is, if the, for the Board of, Com Board of Commissioners, is if you're gonna be open with the Fire Department, just be open. Because your same individual is now wanting to charge the Fire Department $15,000, the possibility of the same thing that this gentleman from DCED did. DCED did for us for nothing. We have not had a chance to go over this study with our consultant. The director, director of DCED does not even know her consultants, doesn't know their references, doesn't. She had to give in a little bit of time to feel them out, see what their experience is, see what they did, look at our study. So I think it was fair enough that we waited till December or September. Uh, so I would like to see if September 24th works for the board members on a Thursday night. Uh, I know we're busy, budget time's coming up uh, for that third Thursday of the month. If we do this, it would have to be virtual. They would get everything ready for us. We would have it here, the committee. It would have to be advertised because we now invited the whole board of commissioners and we cannot be without having it advertised. Um, I'm just asking, um, I would like to be included in this other gentleman that used to work for the DCED when he meets with this committee, uh, to, to be fair for the Board of Commissioners. Uh, the same gentleman worked for DCED is now a consultant out there making money. This is the first I'm hearing tonight about possibility of $15,000 being charged. This is going to be the case. I would like myself and another commissioner to step forward to go to this meeting, to be involved with this meeting, if you expect the Board of Commissioners to spend $15,000 on a consultant that used to work for DCED, when we haven't even given our consultant a chance to give his definition of all your questions and answers is what we agreed upon in September. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm going to comment on. We could do this, and, I, and it's not. There's nobody up here on this board against this consolidation. You've heard them tonight. You hear it from me. It, the board of commissioners requested this from DCED. 
I think it's fair that the Board of Commissioners have a hear on both sides, whether it's your consultant, and if you're asking us to pay the $15,000, well, our consultant had already did the study. Uh, I'm just putting it out there tonight. Just, just so, one question. If, if the three fire companies are to, together and they're working on the merge, we all agree that we want the merger. Why do we have to put so much into this study? I mean, uh, why don't we just work on the agreement? I'm asking. I'm not. I don't know as much because, about the fire right, departments as you had. I'm not. I'm just the asking. study. The study was brought upon my request to the board of commissioners because of the talk, and it's been going on for twenty some years. Right. Knows it. It's been going through all kinds of board members here. And it got to a certain point, and then somebody gets ticked off, and nobody wants to talk. So what my request was a year ago, God, God help us, COVID came. I had nothing to do with that. I'm sorry. But we had three months to read this study. I could guarantee you my committee didn't read the whole study because some of the questions that were asked at our meeting were in that study. So I'm asking everybody to read it. The study does have a lot of census charts and stuff that they got. The same gentleman that we had to do the study from DCE. I'm getting the township prepared. It's not, don't get me wrong, the consolidation part on the operational part, that, that's a heck of an accomplishment. Bylaws, we've been working on that for the last six months, that's an accomplishment. The study says one thing, if you read the study, we need to have a Q&A of the gentleman to give him a chance before we reach out and spend $15,000 on a consultant that used to work for DC, right. who's out making money for it, for the same thing. Because same thing. I, That's right. And I'm not saying I'm right here. Correct me if I'm wrong, Chiefs. Did this gentleman already see our study? Yeah. This gentleman is not doing the study. I didn't say he was. Well, let's, I'm saying let's, let's, yeah. Q &A. Was, let's hold off for the sit. Let's. We we had our citizen in. comments. Um, you know. I would say this. It sounds like the fire departments are definitely working together. Uh, as let's reiterate that the board is in support of it. If there is going to be a meeting, um, I would like to volunteer to be there with you. Um, as I said tonight to Craig, I'd like to know what the sixteen thousand dollars is being spent on. Has he agreed to submit a a, a report on that? Um, no, I don't know if we need to get caught caught up in reviewing the report that was submitted about consolidating and they're and they're doing it so um, you know i'll be happy you know if if there is a meeting about it you know i i i love to be there with you to see how we can uh, to see how we can work through this well i'm, I'm, it's, I'm setting the meeting up for september 24th our gentleman that did the study on the q a and that was the result of the committee that came back when we met and said they want q a for, for Bob Hayden, who was a gentleman that did our study with the Board of Commissioners. All it's, it's my understanding, and correct me if I'm wrong, Craig, that the, the, the cost that I was referring to had nothing to do with the study. It has to do with the legal ramifications of the three organizations combining and the fact that they need new bylaws and they need new, a new um, uh, designation, uh, you know, so they're, they're the elements that they were talking to. And in speaking to a very close friend of mine, he was, he was very happy that, you know, his suggestion, you know, Art had said, you know, this needs to be done legally. And that is what the cost may be. So I would let them go ahead and have the meeting and find out what the cost is and find out what the parameters are. But I believe that's what it is. It has nothing to do with the DCE consolidation report, which I have read and commented at all. If, if that meeting is going to be on September 24th, if we do it at night, there'd be a conflict with the Planning Commission. So uh, we would just need to move one of the two to the other building. That's all. All right. Um, yeah, one more quick thing from the county. Uh, actually, two things. One was for the emergency management. Uh, it came to me, and it, it, I'm pretty sure it was on the uh, Facebook channel. I think were we able to put this on for emergency management for the Facebook about the. Uh, Ready to go hurricanes? No. Yeah. So just for your information, there's a Facebook channel for Chichester and the emergency management gave a uh, good reference on uh, 
www.ready.gov hurricanes. It gives you all kinds of information regarding that. Uh, we just got this tonight. Um, I was unaware of it, but it's also something from the Delaware County uh, Council, which is also a hotline uh, that will be posted on our webpage and uh, everything else is for the residents for uh, help from the uh, hurricane, actually tropical storm for us, uh, home cleanup. It's a hotline or for the residents to call 1-844-965-1388. Um, it's volunteers throughout the county. It helps residents uh, to assist with cutting and removing fallen trees, branches, carpet roofs, uh, mitigating the mold, removing any drywall for an appliance is something that the uh, county put out there for uh, the residents. We'll put this up on the webpage also for us in the uh, Facebook channel. So we'll have that up there. Any, any questions for Commissioner Rick, Rickowski? If not, we'll move on to Commissioner Joe Neary. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, very short, um, the financials are available in the office. The police report is also available in the uh, office. And we received, I can do this under mine. Okay. Uh, we received late this afternoon a request from uh, our tax collector, uh, Kimberly Riley via Margaret Wright. A total uh, refunds to be paid in the amount of $12,347.46. And that's all the result of duplicate payments. Okay. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The ayes have a vote. The motion is carried. And to follow up on your comments, I've known, I was on the board from 1990 to 1993, and Hurley Smoke was one of the first officers. He was on the even back then. Uh, so he has spent a long time here and he's been um, a, go a good officer and a good friend. So I will miss him as well. <laughs> and, and I can attest that he, that he probably didn't cut you a break. He's very much by the book and he's a very, he's a very good officer in my opinion. Any questions for Commissioner Neary? That will wrap up with my report. Um, there's going to be a zoning hearing next month, September 14th, 2020. We authorize the solicitor to attend that meeting um, to raise concerns about a billboard. Um, just to highlight some of the variances that they're asking from uh, that 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 they're asking for. There's five in total. Um, they're asking uh, for the height of 114 feet. Um, our zoning variance allows for 35 feet. They're asking for a proposed sign of 600 square feet. Our, our ordinance allows 100 square feet by right, 200 square feet by special exemptions. So um, I believe those two are ones that we might be concerned about. If you do have any other concerns, please email or Pierce and let him know that. Ms. Whitaker, I know this is your ward. So. Mm -hmm. There's no objections. We'll uh, keep on moving forward with that. Um, really, don't have anything else. We voted on the the, the new business for the uh, uh, extension letter. The only other thing I would wrap up with is I know we spoke earlier tonight about the EIT. There has no. There's been no official confirmation to the township of the Chichester Township that the school district is entertaining on taking the EIT. Um, I, for one, um, would hope to think that we will that one, as Mr. Needles discussed earlier tonight, that helps fund our police department and hope and also helps us to free up um, money to allocate to our fire department, senior clubs and libraries and other uh, various uh, things that we do within the township. So again, there's been no official word or action from the school district about them doing that. I think they've just playing options is one of the things that came up. So um, if there's nothing, if, if there's no comments for me, I have a motion and a second to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Ms. Carey, B is, is adjourned. Righty. What's up? I know. Nobody's voting for that. No.
they're doing coming up with nothing. He's going to fall. Just let him crumble. Yeah. Him down. Then he can't say we did. Right. You know what I mean? Well, I want him to say we did it. I can't. I, he's. I, I get it. I have my own personal feelings about him. So. I get it, but I was just telling you. Yeah, I know I mean, that. I, I know that.